So, what's new in PTE AV Studio 10? Firstly, the name. After almost 20 years of being known as Pictures to Exe, version 10 has been rebranded as PTE AV Studio. This is to reflect the fact that the output is now frequently exported to video files that can be streamed from the internet and played back on a wide variety of devices. You can still export as an EXE file though, which will play back on Windows computers. Most of the changes made to version 10 relate to the inner workings. It's now a 64-bit application and can utilise more memory, meaning faster video processing and increased capacity to deal with large files. There are plenty of improvements to the usability of the program as well. Most noticeable is the new dark mode. This can be turned on by clicking on settings, choosing preferences and selecting the light or dark option. Note that the program can now also be set to auto check for updates. Changing from one mode to the other causes AV Studio to close and restart in the new mode. Let's look at how the video handling has been improved. To demonstrate the improvement, we'll first open a copy of PTE version 9. I'll drag an MP4 file down to the ribbon bar and up pops the option to convert the video to a native PTE format. Usually this was always the best option, but it was time consuming. I won't convert it, but use the original file instead. As you can see, the playback is very jerky and most of the frames have been dropped. We'll close version 9 and do the same thing in version 10. As you can see, there is no pop-up request to convert the video. Playing it back is now completely smooth. The option to convert is still there, however, and if you come across a video that won't play smoothly, simply right-click it and you can convert it as before. Flipping into the timeline view, right-clicking the video brings up several new options. Firstly, it's now possible to trim the start point of the video to exactly where you wish. I'll remove the first 20 seconds of this one by clicking that point on the timeline, then right-clicking the video and choosing Trim Beginning of Video. Much easier than trying to do it by the previous method. Secondly, you can now easily separate the audio from the video using the right-click menu. Again, much faster than the previous workaround. Now that the audio is a separate file, the volume can be adjusted as required. You can also remove the audio clip to mute the video. The handling of audio files has also been improved. I'll add a clip to these images by dragging it down to the timeline. Right-clicking now gives a new option, Split Audio File. The unwanted portion can be removed and the volume changed as required. The Audio Waveform is also now visible in the Objects and Animations window. To turn this view on, click Tools, Waveforms and Show Waveform. The height of the waveform can also be customised.
The old slide style button has been rechristened styles and themes. I'll select some images first and then click it. All of the old styles are there and some brand new ones. The biggest improvement though is the introduction of themes which is a collection of slide styles that can be programmed to play back in series. There are four preset ones and alongside each is the number of styles in the collection. It's also possible to create your own. Click the Tools button and select Create Theme. The list on the left allows you to choose whatever style you want to build into the theme. In practice, it would be best to choose some complementary ones, but for this demo I'll choose some radically different ones to show how it works. From the basic set we'll choose Album, then from the Borders set we'll click Frame Rotate Clockwise In, and finally from the Experimental set we'll choose Brush Stroke. On the right hand side of the screen is the list of selected styles and note that all of these can be repeated as desired and reordered as necessary. Finally we'll save this new theme as Demo. Before we apply this new theme note the timings of the slides. Each one has 2 seconds dissolve and 5 seconds screen time. Now we'll reselect the 6 images and click the Styles and Themes button again. From the User Themes tab I'll apply the new demo theme. Notice that the timings on the slides have all changed. This is because the individual slide styles all have their own timings and these have overwritten the existing ones. For this reason it's best to use the themes option if you do use it before you set your own timings for all the images. To speed things up I'll change them all back to 2 seconds transition and 4 seconds screen time. Now we'll press play. Playing these back you can see how each of these styles have been applied in a series. Well that's it for the main changes in version 10. Others might appear as the program evolves.